So after what seems like years and years of leaks and rumours and endless online waffle and arguments, Samsung has finally yanked open its metaphorical trench coat and waggled about its fresh new Galaxy S23 Ultra smartphone to everyone's delight. Well, everyone who likes whopping great massive blowers that are packed to the pits with premium tech at least. Now, I've given the Galaxy S23 Ultra a proper stroke and a poke ahead of the official launch and compared it side by side with last year's S22 Ultra to see what's changed. And while many of the specs and features will be somewhat familiar to Ultra fans, Samsung has at least done some serious tweaking when it comes to that camera tech. So enough waffle, let's crack on and for more on the latest and greatest tech, please do poke subscribe and ding that notifications bell. Cheers! Now stick the Galaxy S23 Ultra next to the older model and you'll probably be wondering which is actually which. Samsung's changes are either on the subtle side, like the ever so slightly less curvy display which may mean zero palm intrusion issues, or else completely imperceptible to the naked eye like the upgraded Gorilla Glass Coton, which is the fresh new Victus 2 stuff. Gorilla Glass Victus 2 should prove even more shatter resistant and hopefully at least as scratch resistant as the Gorilla Glass Victus Plus which was found here on the Galaxy S22 Ultra from last year. And to be fair, the screen on my year old review model of the S22 Ultra is still in really good nick so that bodes well. Flip those almighty phones over and the Galaxy S23 Ultra basically looks the same again, although you do at least have a slightly different selection of colours, phantom black, cream, green and lavender. It'll be interesting to hear your favourites in the comments down below. For me, it's that sultry green, which kind of reminds me of an old Xperia I once loved. <sighs> and Samsung banged on at length about how the Galaxy S23 Ultra was designed with the planet in mind. So even more bits of this almighty flagship are constructed from recycled materials like bottles, water barrels and even bits of old fishing nets. Yum! And personally, I'm still not massively enamoured with that Ultra design. I think it looks a bit basic and boring. But at least that frosted finish is highly repellent to greasy fingerprints and muck. And while the S23 Ultra's display doesn't slope quite so much over those edges, the actual smartphone itself is still quite curvy, quite comfortable to clutch, even though it is wangingly massive and also pretty bloody hefty. No changes there though from the S22 Ultra, and it's once again IP68 water and dust resistant. Now on board is Samsung's One UI 5.1 launcher, which looks unsurprisingly very similar indeed to One UI 5.0. So yeah, the software experience on that S23 Ultra, very similar to what you get here on the S22 Ultra. In fact, it should be identical once this big bugger here gets updated to 5.1, which should be later this month. And likewise, storage options for the S23 Ultra haven't changed up compared with the previous generation, ranging all the way up to an almighty one terabyte if your stacks are particularly fat. And yes, Samsung has once again stuffed its S Pen stylus into a handy orifice, so you can get all sketchy on that mighty display. This feels and functions the same as last year's pen, with the same app support as far as I could tell. So as usual, I can indulge in my weird warped fantasy of having a glorious mane of rainbow coloured hair. And speaking of that ruddy huge screen, this also hasn't had any love from Samsung this time around. It's another 6.8 inch AMOLED display with a crisp 3088 by 1440 Quad HD Plus resolution and it tops off at 120Hz refresh. You can stream HDR10 Plus video but there's bugger old Dolby Vision support again and those stereo speakers sound proper lush with Dolby Atmos action chucked in while the Bluetooth has been boosted to 5.3. Now the first major upgrade for Samsung's Galaxy S23 Ultra is the performance because rather than shoving one of its own Exynos chipsets inside like it did with the S22 Ultra here in Blighty, Sammy has instead gone with Qualcomm's fresh new Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 chipset. Huzzah! Now, I've already wanged on about this fresh Snapdragon platform in another video, so go have a squint at that for all you need to know. But if you can't be bothered with all that hassle, well, what you can expect is blisteringly fast action and impressive efficiency too. And that efficiency is a major factor because I've been really impressed with the battery life so far on other smartphones I've tested out using the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2. So even though the S23 Ultra once again sports a 5000mAh capacity battery, hopefully that longevity will be improved. Not that the older Galaxy S22 Ultra's battery life was a disappointment of course. I never struggled to make it through a full day on a single charge even when I absolutely mullered this thing. And yes, charging speeds on this here Galaxy S22 Ultra couldn't exactly be described as super swift, but the 45 watt charging wasn't particularly lethargic either, and that's probably just as well because you've once again got it on the Galaxy S23 Ultra. 
along with that same wireless charging support. So far, so rather ruddy familiar, but the biggest update on this year's Ultra is that camera tech. Samsung has saved its special swanky new 200 meg adaptive pixel camera sensor for its most expensive model, which should capture better low light snaps compared with the S22 Ultra's 108 meg effort. How will this new sensor help those night snaps? Well, for one, you've now got 16 in one pixel bin in rather than nine in one, which you had on the previous S22 Ultra. And you've also got the benefit of Samsung's enhanced super quad pixel autofocus. And like other phones that use regular quad pixel autofocus, this uses the actual camera sensor itself in order to accurately determine the distance you are from your subject. And while I haven't had a chance to test it yet, Samsung's night portrait mode on the S23 Ultra can apparently add gorgeous bokeh style effects to your shots, even in low light. And if for some reason you're still obsessed with taking photos and videos of the moon and the stars, well, Samsung's new Astro Hyperlapse and Astro Photo modes will allow you to stand in your garden and snap away as merrily as you like at the infinite darkness surrounding us. But seriously, maybe just stick on Love Island or something instead, you weirdo. Shooting in low light certainly was not a strength of the S22 Ultra compared with some rivals like Oppo's Find X5 Pro and the Pixel 7 Pro. So here's hoping that these changes mean Samsung has some proper optical swagger once again. Samsung's downloadable expert RAW mode is back in action on the Galaxy S23 series, but now with a 50 megapixel mode using four in one pixel binning with the Ultra's primary sensor. And you can once again shoot up to 8K resolution video, but now at 30 frames per second rather than 24, and with a wider angle option as well, boosted from 57 to 80 degrees. And when it comes to shooting low light video with the S23 Ultra, well, you should once again notice a difference just like you should with the photo capture. That's because Samsung has chucked in adaptive video digital image stabilization, as well as improving the general OIS and the noise reduction. Now, when it comes to the other lenses slapped on the arse end of the Galaxy S23 Ultra, well, there's no difference. You've got a 12 megapixel ultra wide angle, plus dual 10 megapixel telephoto shooters, one working at three times optical zoom, the other offering 10 times zoom. So you can pinch in all the way to 100 times if you like. However, around front, the Galaxy S23 Ultra sports a 12 megapixel selfie camera, which is actually a drop in megapixels compared with the S22 Ultra's 40 meg snapper. Although Samsung reckons the Super HDR functionality will make for more impressive snaps when you're working against the light. And frankly, when I shot a selfie on the S22 and S23 Ultras side by side, I looked equally as haggard and wretched in both. So will those S23 Ultra upgrades mean a real difference when it comes to the camera experience, the battery life, and the general performance of these almighty Samsung blowers? Well, you'll have to stay tuned for my in-depth review to really see what a difference it makes, but it'd be great to hear your early thoughts down in the comments below. Please do poke subscribe and ding that notifications bell for more on the latest and greatest tech, and have yourselves a ruddy wonderful rest of the week. Cheers, everyone. Love you.